Hi there, welcome to Jujubee DIY. I'm Sarah, thanks so much for joining me today. Today is the first Friday challenge and the theme is craft your stash. So if you wanna see what I made, stay tuned. For our first DIY, we're gonna use one of these wreath charms from the Dollar Tree. Everything I'm using today is from my stash. So I am hoping that you'll be able to find these items at your Dollar Tree. And if you can't find them now, keep your eyes peeled. Some of these nautical items I know will come back to the Dollar Tree and you'll be able to do these projects if you don't already have these items in your stash. Otherwise, you know, check out Amazon um, and lots of other places are selling wood um, items that you would be able to easily adapt to these projects. So I'm just going to take some nautical rope and I am going to spiral it on the back of this wreath um, charm and I'm going to secure it with just hot glue. I just took all the stickers off the back and then I'm going to get out some cute scrapbook paper that matches the colors that I'm using and I'm going to trace around the uh, charm so that I can cover up that blossom side. Now you don't have to do this if you want, don't want to. You can paint it, you can cover it with nautical rope, but this is just how I decided I wanted to finish off the back of this. And I'm just going to secure it with a glue stick. This sand dollar is one of the plaster sand dollars that the Dollar Tree carried. It was white and I painted it blue. And now I'm gonna dry brush it with some Nantucket blue. I will leave all of the colors and um, items that I use in my description box below. So if you're interested in a certain product, uh, you'll be able to find that down below. I am just gonna finish this off by adding my sand dollar to the nautical rope and then adding a little flat back pearl in the center of that sand dollar. And that completes this project. I think this is super sweet and simple and just perfect for a tear tray. For this DIY, we're gonna use one of the mini palettes from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna start off with this dark blue color. I believe this is the Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint in Nautical. Um, and but it doesn't really matter you just want it kind of a dark blue we're going to create an ombre down this palette so i wanted to start off with this dark color and then i'll gradually get lighter and lighter until i get to white so for this next layer i'm going to mix a little bit of the nantucket blue and that nautical blue together to create a little bit lighter of a color and like i said i am just going to continue to gradually get lighter and lighter as i go down so you can definitely mix your colors up, play with them, see which colors you like um, for a gradient, and then you can do this um, on your palette. Now I had this little star. This is like a wood ornament star from the Dollar Tree, and it is, um, it is a sea star. And I gave it a coat of the mineral chalk paint from Waverly, and then I dry brushed over the top with some antique white from Apple Barrel. And now I'm going to go in with a dotting tool and I'm just going to add some little dots. Now, this little starfish already had the dots um, imprinted on the wood. And so this was really easy to just follow where those dots already were. Um, and if you don't have dotting tools, you can just use a paintbrush or anything round that will get you about the same size dots. And this was really super easy and simple. But I think just giving it a couple of coats of paint with some fun nautical colors really makes this piece just perfect for a tear tray. I just really think this is so cute. I love sea stars. They are so fun. And um, yeah, I'm just going to hot glue that to the palette. And that is all there is for this project. For this DIY, we're going to use one of the Crafter Square wood planks in the square shape and um, some one of these mermaid tails, they came in a two pack. So I'm just going to cut that jute twine and fill in that hole. Next, I'm going to paint it with the blue, nautical blue color from Folk Art. And then I'm gonna put um, this color shift paint over the top in the scale areas. Now, this color shift changes color depending on whatever you use underneath. So definitely 
check out a few different colors to see what combination you like but this color shift paint is just so fun and i love how once it's finished those scales just really pop on that dark blue it's such a fun paint so definitely check that paint out if you haven't yet it's really fun next i went to my cricut and i cut out this be a mermaid in a sea of fish um, with the cricut stencil vinyl and if i can find the um svg that i used for that I will definitely link it below. I'm not sure if it was a design space or if it came from Creative Fabrica. Um, I don't, I don't pay for design space anymore. I, I'm completely Creative Fabrica only. So I will see if I can link it if it is design space. I'm not sure if I can, but I probably should be able to. Anyhow, <laughs> I just used some of that color shift over the top of the word mermaid so that the mermaid was in that kind of purpley pearlescent color and then i'll just go in and remove all of those inside bits now if you need to use a small paintbrush to fix up any areas definitely you can do that um, and clean up anything that might have bled but i think for the most part my stencil turned out pretty good here and then i am just going to place my little um, mermaid tail there on the side and then put a Jenga block or a tumbling tower piece on the back and make it self-standing and here's how this turned out. For this DIY I used one of these little wood planks from Michaels. They are look like pieces of driftwood. I thought it was perfect so I did the mineral over the top with the um, dry brush of the antique white and then of course cut out my stencil with my Cricut and then I'm just going to put in the agave color for the words. Next, I'm going to use these seashells. These are the little wood seashells that came from the Dollar Tree. I got onto Pinterest and I looked up how these seashells kind of, um, you know, looked up seashells like this so that I could paint them in. But basically kind of what I found was that the opening to the shell is just kind of a teardrop shape and then I used this really kind of peachy pink color it's an apple barrel color to fill in the inside now I do go in and do a little bit of shading which I'll show you here in a minute and if you want to do that just all you have to do is add a tiny bit of blue to your orange color there and that'll make a nice shade color for your um, seashell there but you definitely don't have to do any shading if you don't want to and then I went around the very outside edge of that pink area with a little bit darker of an orange color, just using a little bit more blue there. Um, and now I am painting this one with the, I think it's sage green from Folk Art. And then the other one I paint in Agave. And then um, I do paint a third one that is just... Um, like it would look like the back of the seashell so no opening to it and so I painted it solidly with the sage green color and I don't really show you that but you'll see um, that here in a minute so I wanted to add some spirals to my seashells as these seashells really do have kind of a spiral effect they are such beautiful seashells really and I am choosing to go in with some gold here. This is my Posca paint pen in a 07 bullet tip and it is gold and it is a really beautiful gold. It's not too yellow and it is um, almost kind of like an antique gold color. It's really pretty. So I'm just going to add my spirals. If you don't want to freehand this, definitely go in with a light pencil first mark out where you want your swirls to be and then you can go in with your paint pen and you don't make any of those mistakes but i just kind of went in freehand and just added those little lines where i wanted them so on this one i'm going to add some polka dots in every other um, space there or in every, every space there and then um, i missed footage so what i did was i just added those seashells on each side of in need of vitamin C for this little sign that is just perfect for a tear tray and I am indeed in need of vitamin C. As I mentioned before today is the first Friday open challenge. Today's theme is craft your stash. 
Our guest host this month is Christine from DIY Craftaholic. She does awesome budget-friendly DIYs and thrift flips and just all of her DIYs are so fun and cute. And then of course, Lisa from Our Gray House is my co-host that I do this with every single month. So as always, today has a playlist. I will link that down below. Definitely go check out Christine's channel and Lisa's channel, and I hope you enjoy all the inspiration for busting out your stash stuff. For this DIY, I'm using a tag that I have in my stash. It's like a clearance tag from Michael's. I love to go in there when they've got their clearance stuff, um, you know, 80% off on those weird X's and Y's that nobody ever wants. And then I just used some washi tape to create some stripes with mineral in white. And then I got this little crab from 24 Hour Crafts and I gave him a paint of the nautical, added some polka dots and just added him to my tag. And how cute is this little piece for your tear tray? Super easy and quick. All right, this is a fun DIY and it really can open up your creativity. I am going to start off with this little piece of wood. It's just a piece of like balsa wood from probably the DIY birdhouse kit. I love getting those kits because they have all those little pieces of wood and you can use them in so many different ways. So I painted the bottom there with the mineral color from Waverly, let that dry. And then I'm gonna go in with some Nantucket blue add some of the Nantucket blue and then um, kind of to the middle and then some of the nautical blue on top. And then I'm going to blend those two together until it just kind of looks like an ocean scene. So you kind of want it lighter in the front, a little bit darker in the back, add some darker pieces in there as well to look like bits of ocean that are deeper and darker with some of it coming up and crashing over the top. It's just a fun way to make an easy painting. And then I'm gonna go in with white and I'm just gonna stipple this white on to the um, line there between the blue and the brown. And then I'll add a little tiny bit of like, you know, white dry brushed here and there for like an ocean scene. This is super fun, guys. I think that all of you should try this little DIY. It is such a cute little piece and I just had so much fun painting it. So next I created a frame for my piece of wood using regular craft sticks. I just cut them down to the size I needed and glued them around the edge, painted it with agave and there you go, easy peasy. Wow, we are already to the last DIY for today. I uh, love these nautical DIYs. I am getting ready to go on vacation to the Oregon beach in a week or so. So this was a fun and creative way for me to get into the spirit of going to the beach like I need to get in the spirit. It is a fun girls weekend that I do every year. Leave the husband home, leave the kids home, and just go for a little relax. So I painted this anchor um, white. It was originally navy blue, and now I'm going to add some of the white nautical, or not nautical, but the uh, jute twine from Walmart. I like this kind of off-white color. I always have it on hand because it comes in so handy with some of these projects. So I'm going to add some of this rope around and then add some beads, knot up the rope a little bit, add another bead. You can kind of um, hot glue these down as you go so that they stay where you want them, but just get creative and wrap that rope and those beads wherever you want. I painted some of them in the dark blue color, which is that nautical color, and then some of them in the Nantucket blue. Um, from Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint. Those were just such fun, oceany kind of colors to me, and I just love this color scheme. So I'm just going to continue to wrap the rope around and knot in these beads. And like I said, you can just kind of hot glue them in place if you need to as you go, but I really didn't need to do that. So I'm just going to finish it off with a little knot um, in the back and you don't see me do that but I just finished it off with a little knot in the back and then just hot glue that end down so that it all stays in place and you can just see I was playing with it there now I decided that I wanted to go in and dry brush some of the agave color on top I kind of wanted this to look like it had a little bit of patina maybe um, like it was had been sitting out or it was kind of getting old so that's why I chose to do that but 
Here's a look at how that turned out. And here is a look at my finished final tear tray. I really love this seam. I added in some of those little wicker balls. Those are so fun and really remind me of the beach. Added in some seagrass from the Dollar Tree and a couple of other little items along with all the projects we made today. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you might try some of these nautical themed DIYs for your own tear tray. Definitely let me know if you do. And as always, let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite. I am so happy that you're here today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a happy, healthy, and blessed day and a super happy Easter. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.